coming this weekend. Events included It'll be just on the east side of the football stadium. Here, 37 clubs participated in the Tucson Gate community. The Digital Terrain Month. Hello, and thank you for tuning into Wildcast. I'm Michael Hernandez. And I'm Janae Gonzalez. We broke news of this last week, but in case you missed it, controversial campus preacher Brother Dean Saxton made another stir on the U of A Mall. This time it ended with him getting kicked off campus. Reporter Olivia Jackson was at the scene. Brother Dean, a vocal protester, was arrested by UAPD. He was arrested on assault charges for kicking a female student in the chest. Eyewitnesses at the scene describe what took place. And he immediately moved toward her and kicked her in the chest. So another lady came over and decided to call 911 immediately, had the, the victim come over and sit down, and we were all standing around. And the guy, his name is Dean, he just kept yelling and kept talking about what he believes until the cops came and handcuffed him. I've heard about him for a long time. He's been on this campus doing exactly what he did today for a long time, and I just hope that this is finally enough to persuade U of A to kick him off. Reporting for UATV Channel 3, I'm Olivia Jackson. Saxon was taken to the Pima County Jail and charged with a Class 1 misdemeanor for assault. He was issued an order banning him from the U of A campus for one year. The Arizona Board of Regents has outlined the terms for U of A President Ann Weaver Hart's departure. The President Hart's contract expires in June 2018, but a committee has been named to search for her replacement. Hart said she will not look to renew her contract when it ends. Under the terms, if a new president is found before then, Hart will become a tenured professor in the College of Education. Students looking to find a job gathered at the U of A's annual career fair. Wildcast reporter Carson Currier attended the fair to find out what recruiters are looking for. University of Arizona students embrace the opportunity to express their hopes in finding future jobs at the university's annual career fair. This is the first one I've attended at U of A, but throughout my life I've attended a few different ones. And I definitely find it helpful because it gets you that first initial contact with the company that you're hopefully looking to work for. Career fairs are always a huge hit here at the U of A, but what goes on behind the scenes when planning and attending career days? A, a lot of planning goes into it. It takes virtually at least like the whole year putting together all the different events that we do. This year we have 145 tables the first day and about 135 I think the, the, the second day. Along with offering jobs, employers attending the career fair offered advice to students that were hoping to stand out from the crowd. I think that um, for any company that's in here, the main thing that we're looking for in a new graduate is, is learning agility, which is can you come into a situation you've never been in before, you know, be challenged with a job or a task and kind of figure out what you're supposed to do and how to get it done. Career services help students explore their interests and gain professional experience in the work world. Conquer the next career fair and take advantage of the multiple resources and online tools that Career Services has to offer. Reporting to you from the Grand Ballroom with UATV, I'm Carson Courier. Coming up next, find out where you can get your flu shot without leaving campus. Plus, the U of A has moved up in the world of higher education. Find out how high it's climbed after the break.
What are you guys doing? Working. Continue. Welcome to Wildcast. I'm Toby Schmidt. And I'm Michael Hernandez. Welcome to Wildcast. I'm Sarina Nafarrate. And I'm Danielle Karp. Welcome to Wildcast. I'm Max Allen. And I'm Jackie Kent. Welcome to Wildcast. Welcome. Welcome. And welcome. Welcome. And welcome to another edition of Wildcast. The City of Tucson is looking to get students from the U of A interested in buying homes around campus. Wildcast reporter Paige Jones got the details at the Home Buyers Expo. The University of Arizona hosted the Home Buyer Expo in the Student Union Grand Ballroom last week. Pioneered by Tucson Mayor Jonathan Rothschild, the expo is designed to increase the number of home buyers in the Tucson area and provide information necessary to buy a home. The real idea, too, is to get people from the University of Arizona, employees uh, from the city of Tucson, from the county, from all the new downtown businesses that are coming in, like Caterpillar, to come in, move into these neighborhoods, and revitalize them. The Pathway to Purchase program is specifically for properties located in the city of Tucson, including all the areas located around the University of Arizona. The idea is to increase owner-occupied properties around the U of A. The importance is to increase owner-occupied properties around the U of A. A lot of these properties are uh, vacant uh, much of the time, they're occupied by tenants, and we really want to see um, owner-occupied areas. The purpose of today's event is to encourage members of the community to come out and become a home buyer. The Home Buyer Expo is offering the resources to do just that. The reason that we're here at the Home Buyers Expo is because all of our magnet schools, which have special programs, are located within the area that they're uh, targeting for the home buyers who are here today. So this way we're able to give them some information about great school programs that are available in the areas they're looking at houses in. In addition to offering resources about school programs, the Home Buyer Expo encouraged potential home buyers by providing helpful information on mortgage payments, credit scores, and down payment assistance. Reporting from the Student Union for UATV, I'm Paige Jones. The U of A has moved up in the world of higher education. It ranks 156th out of nearly 1,000 institutions according to the Times Higher Education World University Rankings. Now that's up seven spots from last year. Out of nearly 150 universities included in the list from the U.S., the U of A ranks 56th. The U of A will begin administering flu shots at various locations on campus for university employees. The first chance to get one is this Friday outside the Arizona Health Sciences. To receive a flu shot, you must complete a flu shot consent form and bring it along with your insurance card and employee ID number. As 3D printing continues to gain popularity, the U of A is helping students take a closer look at the latest tools and technology at its iSpace Tech Talks. Reporter Sierra Burke takes an in-depth look. I just, I just... Techniques in 3D scanning, printing, and modeling were showcased at the iSpace Tech Talk last week. Objects like prosthetic hands, models of brains, and bodies were just some of the 3D printed models students could check out. The new technology is changing the nature of how students are learning at the U of A. I've seen a lot of examples of students who haven't had any ex access to these, this technology or these materials before. They come in, they'll see the, the printers going, or they'll see the students working on something, and they go, how do I do that? What is that? This prosthetic is meant for someone who has partial wrist or hand, um, and then the hand is actually set in there. And once properly strung together and complete, congrats. Why 3D print, you ask? Objects made with a 3D printer cost $20, whereas a similar product costs about 10 times that. 3D printing is an evolutionary step from spraying ink on paper to putting down layers of an actual object. The iSpace Learning Community is where you can meet new people, play with new tools, and build on your own skills. Experts are more than willing to show students just how it's done. I got an up-close presentation on how to take screenshots of an actual real-world object and turn it into a 3D model that could be used for analysis. 
Professors are using the scanner to create virtual reality environments for students to get a feel of a specific time period. And what that camera is doing is it's taking a video and it's also projecting a pattern of infrared dots and to generate a 3D mesh that you can then 3D print. Students don't need a background in the technology and all you need to bring is your CAT card. Rather than going out and doing all this expensive, purchasing all this stuff, just come in, check it out, see if you like it, and if you do really like it, then decide to buy one. The iSpace Tech Talks are held every Friday. Reporting to you from the Engineering Library for UATV, I'm Sierra Burke. That was absolutely fascinating. I know. The things people are coming up with these days in technology is just mind-blowing. You know what I think? I think that we should perfect 2D printing so that I can print off an <laughs> essay before class without any interruptions. Before we get before to we this get to stuff? 3D. Yeah. Yes, that's probably a good point. <laughs> Well, many people betted against Arizona football for Saturday's game against Washington. However, they came out ready to play and took the game into overtime. We'll have the score and highlights when we return. Welcome to Wildcast. I'm Toby Schmidt. And I'm Michael Hernandez. Welcome to Wildcast. I'm Sarina Naparrate. And I'm Danielle Karp. Welcome to Wildcast. I'm Max Allen. And I'm Jackie Kent. Welcome to Wildcast. Welcome. Welcome. And welcome. Welcome. And welcome to another edition of Wildcast. Wildcats and welcome to Wildcats Sports. I'm Brandon Mejia in for Danielle Fork and in case you missed the Arizona football game, well it went into an overtime excitement. Arizona welcomed the Washington Huskies Saturday night in a game that went touchdown for touchdown. Sports reporter Courtney Rice has the recap. The Arizona Wildcats took on Washington with a new Solomon and Nick Wilson injured. Freshman JJ Taylor came out strong for Arizona scoring their first touchdown early in the game. But Washington answered when wide receiver John Ross ties the game at 7-7. Arizona quarterback Brandon Dawkins then had a 79-yard touchdown run to put Arizona on top. Makes a first Washington defender miss. He's got a hole, cuts across the 30, the 40. He's got a big hole across midfield, 40. Washington defenders chasing after him, 20, 10, 5, touchdown, Brandon Dockett. <laughs> but Washington remained quick on their feet, scoring a touchdown to end the first half tied at 14-14. Washington opened the third quarter with a three-yard touchdown run by quarterback Jake Browning to put Washington ahead, 21-14. 
Then, Dawkins leaps over Washington defense into the end zone to tie the game back up to 21-21. Arizona and Washington both score again, which led into overtime, where Dawkins couldn't come in contact with the snap, and Washington's Jake Browning was able to complete a four-yard touchdown pass to Dante Pettis for the game-winning play. Washington won 35-28. Women's tennis brought home the singles and doubles title from the Battle of the Bay Classic in San Francisco this past weekend. Senior Lauren Marker and freshman Paris Corley led the Wildcats to victory. Up next, they will host the Wildcat Invitational this Friday. As for the men, they hosted their Wildcat Invitational over the weekend. They won two of the three single matches they were scheduled to play. This was their first and only time playing at home. They will now head to New Mexico next. Women's soccer will look to bounce back after a devastating 4-0 loss to USC on Friday. They continue their Pac-12 play against Colorado at home this Thursday. Kickoff set for 7 p.m. Arizona Volleyball took on the Sun Devils last Wednesday. I was there to catch all the action. Here's a recap from the game. It's the start of Pac-12 play for women's volleyball, and it was the duel in the desert Wednesday night as ASU came to Tucson to take on the Wildcats and a rambunctious crowd in attendance here in McHale, both from U of A and ASU in full support of their teams. But the first set would go to the Wildcats as Katrina Pulovich spiking it down. She would go on to have a fantastic night. Arizona State wouldn't fall short taking the second set over Arizona 25-23, but remember the Wildcats planned without their ace, Kalei Mao, who missed tonight's game with a back injury, but that wouldn't stop the Wildcats. Third set, we go, and a beautiful assist from Panina Snuka to Kendra Dolke. Wildcats win the third set 25-23, going up 2-1 into the fourth. Full support from UA men's swim team in attendance. Fourth set in Arizona with an opportunity to take it, and that's exactly what they do, taking it 25 to 18, three sets to one. Arizona will take the victory. I was proud of how we handled that. We had, I mean, Katarina really stepped up for us, her best match of the season, and, and I'm not sure if we would have come out on top had she not offensively been as dominant as she was. Kendra played terrific. Uh, I was really proud of Tyler Spriggs. She struggled big time in the game one and two and really had to have a gut check there, dug deep, and really started to play better. We wouldn't have won that match had Tyler not kind of turned things around. The Arizona Wildcats defeat ASU tonight in a spectacular game. Panina Snuka looking better than ever, and this is what Dave Rubio has to say about her in the upcoming game against Colorado. Panina makes us go. I mean, she's one of the most special athletes I've ever coached, and her brain may be her best asset. But what she does for us and keeps us get in rhythm and keeps the, the plays and continues to plays on because of her effort level is just remarkable. You know, Colorado is a little bit of a mismatch for us. You know, they're really physical. It's, it's a different type of team physically than what you see at ASU. ASU is big, but they're not huge. You can catch all the action this Sunday against Colorado. Game time set for 12 p.m. But for UATV Channel 3 Sports, I'm Brandon Mejia. After taking down ASU, Wildcat Volleyball traveled to Colorado where they would be tested against the 16th ranked team, but unfortunately the Wildcats fell short in five, five very close matches. Arizona Volleyball will get back in action Friday evening against Oregon State at home. Game time set for 8 p.m. Well, that's all for sports. We'll be right back after this break. Continue. 
Welcome to Wildcast. I'm Toby Schmidt. And I'm Michael Hernandez. Welcome to Wildcast. I'm Sarina Nafarrate. And I'm Danielle Karp. Welcome to Wildcast. I'm Max Allen. And I'm Jackie Kent. Welcome to Wildcast. Welcome. Welcome. And welcome. Welcome. And welcome to another edition of Wildcast. Before we leave, we'd like to get your opinion in our latest segment, Twitter Question of the Week. This week's question has to do with the first presidential debate hosted this evening. Do you plan on voting in this November election? Let us know on our Twitter poll at UATVCH3 and make sure to like us on Facebook as well. That's all for us. Have a good night. <laughs> good night.